This is uh, coffee time, and uh, we have the finest coffee. <laughs> we are all settled into our spot and now we're going to go do our first trail which is apparently quite a big one but there's a moonrise coming up soon and hopefully we'll find a nice spot to watch that. How on earth is that just balancing on that little thing? Going up there. No, you wouldn't, baby. Nothing worthy to hold. Broken while I had a chill campsite morning, Darcy the crazy fit guy went and ran multiple trails and had his usual nature froth session. This place has absolutely blown my mind away. It's absolutely incredible. This stuff is just what dreams are made of. Completely surreal. It doesn't do justice. I reckon one of the best things about camping is just that slower paced life, no schedule to keep to, and also those random day naps. <laughs> You're sleeping while I'm running. After feeling much more rested, Darcy finally convinced me to go on a walk, which did not disappoint. And we're going to slide from the top, and we're going to slide all the way down the slide. <laughs> So if you follow my channel, you've probably realized by now that this video is a little bit different from my usual sewing tutorial style, but sneaking away for quick escapes to explore this beautiful country is also one of my passions and I thought it just could be good to bring you guys along and through this I could share some insight into this slower paced living, tips for places to visit and as well how I thrift or op shop on the move. I just find that old country towns always seem to have the best hidden gems. So far we've finished the first half of our trip which involved driving about four hours inland to check out Girraween National Park which absolutely blew our minds with its rock formations. And then we're just looping back now through Warwick and Kalani and heading towards areas that are a bit more rainforesty where we'll find some more rock pools and waterfalls to explore. This is so nice, like slowing down, coming out into nature, not really doing anything, not having to be anywhere, having to put our phones on the flight mode because there's no signal. It's just so, so lovely, such a nice little refresh and I'm definitely keen to keep doing this as much as we can in between work. Yeah, we are at Queen Mary Falls and then we will potentially head back home tomorrow and again just do some stops in some other cute towns along the way. When I get home, I'll show you guys a little thrift haul of what I found. Time to settle in for the night and then get back into it all again tomorrow.
What's been your highlight of the trip? Highlight of the trip is flat mode. <laughs> I like that too. I can hear the sweet, sweet sound of water. She complained the whole time and then we got to the spot where halfway is and had a beautiful swim. We did leave at the middle of the bloody day and it was so hot, but it was worth it, I'll admit that. Oh, it's so cool. <laughs> yeah, normal life at home and to be honest it's actually been a few months since going on our trip that I am now filming this. This has been a whirlwind of time. I mean what even is time I swear it's going so fast at the moment. I've also just been working through the pieces that needed thrift flipping and sporadically getting through them whenever I get a chance and finally we are at that point. It's so nice to get away. I always find a nature-based escape always just I don't know resets me. There was so much more happening outside of our little bubble and getting away is always a reminder of that. I came back feeling really great grounded, inspired and excited and I just always try and keep that energy going for as long as I can. I feel like I'm at that point again now where I'm like feeling a little bit anxious and stressed because it has been a few months and we've got another trip coming up so that'll be my little reset again. Everything that I'm going to show you today is a mixture of things from that trip as as well things that I've just gotten over the past few months and that I thought it was worth sharing. So first up are the pieces that I'm happy in their original form and then I'm going to dive into the pieces that needed a little bit extra love and I kind of bought them for the potential and knew that I could customize them into something that I would more likely wear. But yeah, first up I got a few button up shirts, classic Maddie. I just think they're such a staple. These ones in particular were some nice colours and fits that I don't really have in my wardrobe so picked them up, happy as they are, added them straight into the wardrobe, obviously after washing them. Then I scored this pink silky dress. I think obviously you can tell it is intended to be a nightgown style, but I feel like it has the potential to be able to be worn in public and styled in a way that looks cute and wearable. I think also as well, if you layer it up, it can look like a silky mini skirt. So a simple one to add to the wardrobe. You know, it has pug hair all over it. <laughs> then I got this knitted vest. It's got like a rugby logo on there. I think it's from a high school from up on the Sunshine Coast. So that's funny. And this is actually so warm. I have worn it a few times and like literally just had to wear a shirt under it and currently all for that vest aesthetic at the moment and I think this is a fun kind of preppy style that I can wear laid over a dress or some baggy trousers and a shirt and then we've also got the blue top again I bought from the material I liked the flowy style I loved the floral print but I thought the top itself was quite a bit daggy and I turned it into the skirt I'm actually wearing now and here's how I turned it from a shirt into a skirt <laughs> 
First up, I needed to figure out the point where it would actually still fit around my waist and then also be a nice length as a skirt. So for me, that ended up being right in between the two armhole sections and I popped a pin where I wanted that height to be and then simply just trimmed around these sleeves across that height and then back down the other sleeve and then popped it back on inside out so that the good sides are facing and pinned the approximate shape I wanted it to be around my hips. Once I was happy with the fit of that, I then unpinned one side so I could obviously get back out of it and use my fabric chalk to then map the shape that I would then sew down one side. Once I'd sewn that, I just trimmed the excess off and then used that as a template to then map out the other side. Although this time, because obviously it is a tight fit around the waist, I need to add a zip in so I can get in and out of this skirt. So once I'd trimmed down that shape and then figured out which side was the good side of the zip and placed that good side facing to the good side of the material with the edges aligned. When I put the zip in place, I made sure to offset the top from the edge to allow enough seam allowance for later on pinned that in place and then I just simply sewed a line from the top down to the bottom pretty much in line with that little silver bit that indicates the end of the zip. You can switch your machine foot to a zip style which will help make this a lot easier but if you're like me you can just use your normal foot but then just make sure that you stop about halfway through, close the zip so that the big bulky part is out of the way and then continue sewing as normal and then it was time to repeat the process on the other side but obviously now the zip is attached to the material we do the same thing where we place it good sides facing with the edges aligning. Again, offset it with enough seam allowance above for the waist area. So one straight line down the very edge. Now the zip is all attached, but obviously you can see on the good side that it is very exposed. So we will fix this up later by covering it up a little bit. But for now, I just focused on finishing closing up this seam that is below the zip area. And I did this again by flipping it inside out, making sure that the good sides are facing and sewing with about a three quarter of an inch or at least two centimeter seam allowance as I wanted it to be quite large so that it'll help me with the next step. So I sewed just pretty much where I stopped with the zip with that extra seam allowance down pretty much into the bottom. Now I'm going to sew a frame pretty much around the zip area and push the material over the top so it hides the zipper. And by adding that extra seam allowance before when we were sewing the seam, this is giving me the extra material I need to be able to push it over the top of the zipper. So once I was happy with the placement of that, I pinned it all around and began sewing a frame from the top down one side across underneath the zip making sure I don't go over the zip and break the needle. Turned the corner again and went back up to the top. So now that the zip and that side seam is all finished I then switch my focus to the waistband area and there's a few ways that I could have finished this. I could have added an extra waistband, I could have added some facing here so it is a cleaner seam but instead I just chose to do a double hem here as that was what was best suited to what I had available. So I did a double fold, pinned it in place, sewed it in place and that is my skirt all done. <laughs> Now this number is a piece that I just like pretty much ran across the thrift shop for because I was obsessed with this retro style pattern and then also found out it is kind of like a stretchy lacquer -like material and as soon as I made eye contact with it and picked it up and felt it I was like this needs to be a with jean inspired dress if you know the style it's kind of got that drawstring effect on the sides and then a bunched up center and that is pretty much what I did here so kind of turned it from like a regular daggy dress into a more like I don't know maybe sexy disco-esque vibe. I'm obsessed with it and if you are too you can see how I transformed it in these steps. <laughs> As I wanted this dress to be a style that is a straight across fit with spaghetti straps added in I started by chopping off this top section of the dress. I then used this top section that I trimmed off to create the straps that I will then be adding on. I did this by utilizing the height that was already there and trimming it down to about 1.5 inches wide for each section. Because I wanted this to be a tie strap style these are going to be the front straps and then I'm going to cut out another two more pieces that replicate this in some leftover material that I had in my scrap pile which I will use for the back section. I then folded these so they were facing good sides, sewed down one short edge and then entirely down one long edge leaving the other end open. I did that usual process where I grabbed a clean paintbrush, popped it on the closed end and then used that to push the material good sides out. Repeated that for all four straps. To create a nice clean finish and the ability to add these straps in I chose to add some facing so all I needed to do was measure the top, trim out a replicated amount 
out that I can then sew the short side together and that created like a boob tube that I could pretty much just add onto the top section of the dress and I did this by facing the good sides together, pinning that in place and then inserting the straps where I wanted them to sit, kind of in a sandwiching process where they sit between the main dress and the facing. See, so yeah, I pinned the raw edges in with the nice clean edges hanging out. Once I was happy with the placement of them, I simply pinned them in as well and then just went around here the entire top edge and sewed one single line. Once that was finished, I also then just flipped it so that I did a, an understitch to help just create a clean finish so that the underside wouldn't just keep popping out as it was quite a flimsy material. I then just did a stitch in the ditch method where I just sewed down the side seam where the facing is and that will just help keep it in place and ensures that it won't flip out and expose itself. That is pretty much all the top section done. I then needed to add in the side is it rouging slash drawstring effect. I trimmed out four pieces that will end up being these straps which are about one inch wide and the height from my armpit pretty much down to my knee as I wanted this to be quite an extended look. So again folded them good sides, sewed down one short side and then down the entire length. I did the same thing where I put the paintbrush up against the closed end and pushed the good sides out and you'll see that I have now one nice thin spaghetti strap style and I repeated that process and then needed to create a frame for these straps to go into and create that drawstring effect which will sit on the inside of the dress. So I laid down my two straps over my excess material, made sure that I had enough space to sew one line on the side, one line in the middle and then one line on the other side and obviously just added a bit of extra seam allowance just to be safe. For this material it doesn't really fray so I'll end up just trimming it pretty much to the edge that I sew. But if you were using like a linen or something that does fray, you might want to consider hemming these edges as they will be quite exposed. Once I had that bit, I then just mapped out its placement, which is pretty much the side seams. And I want the center of this piece to match with the center of the seam that we were adding it on top of. Pinned that bit in place first and then literally just sewed down this center seam. And I did it from the good side so that I could at least see that I am staying in line with the seam and you probably won't see that sewing line. Once I sewed all the way down there, I then repeated that process and sewed down one edge, making sure to leave enough space for the strap to go in. Repeated that again for the other side and then just trimmed off any excess material. And that is pretty much how I created the two tunnels that I will then insert my straps to. Next, I popped a safety pin on the raw edge of my strap, inserted this through one of these tunnels, pushed it all the way until it got to the top and then just pinned it and secured it in place so that it won't move while I do the other one. Repeated the same thing where I pushed the second strap up all the way through until it aligned with the top section. Pinned that in place and then all I need to do is just sew across there and that will help secure those straps in place. I repeated that for the second side and that is how I completed my rouging slash drawstring effect. And then for the center, I just got a bit of elastic and cut it to the height that I wanted it to end up being. So for me that was like my mid chest down to my mid thigh area. I then just stretched this out on the center length of the dress and simply kept stretching it and sewing it in place until I'd finished the full height of it. Popped the dress on, tied up my straps, drawed my drawstring and this is the final number in action. <laughs> Then there was this white, I think it's called like an anglaise lace material. Well, that really stood out to me. And I didn't quite know what I would turn it into, but I knew after I sat down and had a bit of a brainstorm, I could turn it into something that suits my style better. And my goodness, did we do that. So I turned it from quite like a little simple daggy top into more of like a boho inspired top. So here are the steps of how I transformed it in case it interests you. First up for this top, I wanted to reduce the openness of the neck as it's quite large at the moment and I want it to be a little bit tighter. So so popped it on, figure out how much I needed to take in on this area and then laid it down so it's inside out with the good sides facing. Measured out and pinned that amount that I figured out and then drew a line from this pin up into the top corner of the sleeve and the shoulder seams. Repeated that for the other side and then just simply sewed a straight line across there. I was still able to slip it on after I'd taken in the neck but if for some reason it had been too tight that is actually all good because I will end up opening up the back section later and creating a tie feature. Next I tried it on again and figured out how much of a midriff style I wanted to turn this into keeping in mind that I was going to be adding an elastic 
waistband in there. Whatever point I wanted it to be, I added about two inches of seam allowance to allow for the elastic to fit in there. Put a pin in there, trimmed it at that point. That section that I then trimmed off the bottom, I ended up cutting down the seams and creating two separate pieces, and that is what I'm going to then add onto my sleeves to give them that oversized bell sleeve effect. I then went back and faced them good sides and sewed down the one short edge, so again we create like a bit of a cylinder effect. I then jumped in front of the mirror and did a bit of a trial and error process, which honestly is what I do a lot of the times with thrift flipping. I will just try things on and kind of figure out what I want to do as it's coming along. And I finally figured out that I wanted the lacy detail of the existing sleeve to sit on top of this part that I will be adding on. After figuring out that is the style I wanted, that means I need to gather the top of this extra section so it will fit the sleeve. So I do that by simply just sewing a parallel line to the top edge, making sure not to backstitch at the beginning or end, and then pull those threads until it meets the width of the existing sleeve. Once I was happy with that I then just inserted this edge underneath the existing lace. As you can see the lace sits over the top of it, pinned that in place and then just sewed a line around there and secured that new section onto the sleeve. I then repeated that process for the second sleeve and this is then where I cut the back open. So I folded it to help me find the center point, trimmed down the back center, zigzag stitched these edges so that they won't fray, laid them back good sides and sewed from the bottom towards the top making sure to stop about three to four inches so that can be my open neck hole feature of the top. this open neck hole area just by folding those edges over, sewing a frame around there so I go down one side, across that seam and then back up the other side. I then conveniently found that I had a bit of lacy material in my scrap pile which I then removed some material off there that I could then add on to the neck area to give it that extra lacy detail. Once I trimmed out a bit that matched the width of the neck plus a little bit extra to create a tie section at the end, I pinned that on the underside, sewed that in place. to go into, sewing that in place and stopping about two to three inches from where I started, trimming a bit of elastic that is my waist width, popping a pin on the end of there and then just simply gathering and pulling it around until I get back to the beginning point, pulling it out, overlapping that elastic and sewing it together so it is joined, pulling it all back through so it is sitting into this section and then just simply closing up that bit of the hem that I left open and this is the final garment. And again, I got a classic old button up shirt, but this time I thought I would give it a bit of extra love. I wasn't really into the original fit and style of this. is one of those pieces that I think I went into it not really knowing what I was going to create, but at each step I just stood in front of the mirror, mapped out what I would like or wouldn't like, and then just followed those steps that matched that, transformed a button up into a really adorable wrap shirt instead. So I tried it on, figured out the point that I would like to crop it to to make it more of a midriff style, popped a pin in there, and then trimmed it in line with this area. Keeping in mind to add about an inch seam allowance so that I can hem it later on. I then chopped the collar off, removed any buttons, and honestly at this point I was just over pinning and sewing things, so don't get offended if you see me not pinning stuff and also not ironing. So I folded over that neckline section just to create a hem, and then did the same thing down the center area where I folded inwards on an angle from about the top shoulder seam down to the bottom center so it created a bit of an angle that would work with the wrap style. I then trimmed off some straps from that excess material that had already been cut off at about one inch wide by the existing width of this bottom area. I trimmed off the bulky sections on either end. Again I know my life would be much easier if I ironed at this stage. Here I am folding the good sides facing, pinning it in place and making my life hard because I like to self-sabotage and then I sewed one short side, one long side and then left the other end open and as we have been doing before I then use a clean paintbrush, push the closed end out and reveal the good sides. 
I did this for both of the straps that I created and then it was time to insert it into the bottom section. So I did a double folded hem on this bottom section that we cut raw and when I got to either of the outside edges I then just folded the raw edges of the straps into there, sewed the hem closed as I normally would and then went down and secured the strap in place and then that meant I had two straps ready to wrap it. And technically I could have finished there and if it was a style or a length sleeve that I liked I probably would have but I wanted to make these sleeves just a little bit longer. I trimmed some extra excess material again that would fit onto the existing sleeve, laid it down good sides facing, sewed down the short edge and created a bit of a tunnel that I could then pop over the existing sleeve, face some good sides facing, align those raw edges, sew one line to secure it in place and then as a very final touch I then created some little tie straps to cover up the seam that I have then added in. Conveniently my collar actually ended up being a good width for this so I just utilized my collar and then cut out some replicated sizes from other excess material and then folded these edges good sides, sewed pretty much all of the edges closed and left about one inch open on one of the long sides and that will just allow me to flip the good sides out and then I will close it up later. Through that hole pushed out all the good sides so they are now facing outwards. I then did a top stitch along all of these edges and in the process that ended up closing that hole. Folded this strap in half to find the center point and aligned that center point with the bottom seam on my sleeve. Just sewed one simple line there and attached it and then I could tie the straps up. And then that is my shirt all wrapped up and ready to wrap around me. <laughs> And again, I think if this is your style, there is nothing wrong with this in the beginning. I bought it because I loved, I what the style is called, but this like kind of dotted knitting throughout. Personally, I just don't really like the longer length of it. I would rather have a crop style where I could wear dresses underneath it and also pair it with my high-waisted pants. So I'll show you the steps of how I transformed this piece. I'll be creating a tie feature in this updated cardigan. So I grabbed some scrap material that kind of matched the color of the existing knit. Trimmed out four pieces that will be the tie straps, which were about one and a half inches wide and 30 centimeters or 12 inches long and then folded them good sides facing, sewed down one short side and down the entire length and left the short end open and I'm sure I sound like a bit of a broken record here and then got a clean paintbrush and placed this on the closed end and pushed the good sides out so they revealed themselves and the thing with the knitted cardigan is I don't particularly want to cut it to make it a cropped style because there's just the risk of it unraveling so for this one I thought it might be a good idea to lie it down and just kind of fold the insides upwards until they reach the bottom of the armhole section and for me that ended up being the length that I wanted it to be so that worked out perfect so I folded them in there pinned them in place in a few various spots which included the side edges the side seams that I'm going to be sewing up and I'll pin in the middle back center section and then also inserted the straps in these side areas and continued to sew up each of the sides up the side seams so kind of like a stitch in the ditch method and then I also just sewed one little back section which like ideally I probably would have hand sewed but I just wasn't in the mood to do that so found a spot where it would kind of blend in and just sewed across a small section and that will help keep it secure in place so it doesn't drape down the back section and then this is how my cute little cropped cardigan turned out with the tie features at the front. this number because I really liked the knitted style of it and also if you know me by now I love a good like olive green tone. For me personally I just really don't like short sleeves so again there's probably nothing wrong with this original piece but I wanted to transform it into something that I would wear more which is one of those cool vest styles and I didn't plan on having this like contrasting binding around the edge but as I was going through it that was meant to get tucked in and hidden away. But then I added that and I really liked it and kept it. So if you're interested on how I turned a little knitted top into a vest, keep watching. As I mentioned before, it is a little bit risky cutting into a knitted material as it can very easily unravel. So with this, I laid down some cotton tape or you could alternatively use a bias binding. And I laid this down with the edge aligning with the sleeve line. I pinned this in place all the way around the sleeve hole area. I hope this makes sense, but the goal here was to sew on the edge that was closest to the end of the sleeve. That way I can wrap it over the edge when I cut it. I'm using the existing seam to act as a bit of a barrier so it doesn't unravel. So I 
and then trimmed along the sleeve section all the way around and then folded over this cotton tape slash binding over these raw edges that are now revealed so that can act as a safety guard and stop it from unraveling and then pinned this folded section in place and then sewed a single line to secure it that is pretty much it as I mentioned before like you probably could fold it in again and hide this binding section but I ended up liking it so this is the final best in action tips on how you can give some thrifted pieces a new lease on life. I think each of these pieces I tried to do some sort of different skill or thrift flipping process so hopefully you got something out of that and also I know this video is a little bit different from my usual stuff. I did a bit of adventuring in the beginning and then the sewing stuff in the second half. If you happen to like this stuff I have plenty of more trips in the works so I can definitely film more of them, give you more of like an insight into the traveling and venture side or just stick to the thrifting and sewing stuff. I don't know. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're having a lovely day wherever you are and I will see you guys in the upcoming videos.